We are three games down and we have one to come in what has been an extraordinary series between Australia and New Zealand. And for the final time in 2019, hello and welcome. Great to have your company on the Weekly Pivot. Jack Heverin and Shani Layton with thanks to Blooms the Chemist, your first call pharmacy professionals. Aren't you looking sharp for our last episode? Real business-like from you, Shans. I know. I've really mixed it up this year, haven't I? I've <laughs> yeah. gone from business attire to hoodies. And yeah. I thought I just wanted to impress everyone in this last episode. And especially you, Jack, because, you know, it's the last time I'm going to see you for a while. No, it's and emotional. It is emotional. It's emotional. Let's I'm not forget our beach ball. outfits as well. When oh, the Sunshine Coast Lightning yes. won their grand final. That was a highlight for me. But we're looking sharp <laughs> in those beach outfits. As I mentioned, we're three games down. One game to come on Sunday. Let's catch up. If you missed out what happened on the weekend, just gone. It was the Silver Ferns winning by one chance in an extraordinary game. Can you even cope? Another one goal game. This was outrageous. But the main thing that we're looking at here is the penalties. Yeah. The Diamonds had 52 and the Silver Ferns had 39. And look, this is because of the way that the Silver Ferns play. They play off the body, more of a defensive game. But it was the only thing separating the teams. For 90% shooting both ways, rebounds, the Diamonds got a few more, so therefore really should have turned that down court. Mm. But that was where the Diamonds were struggling, was having the defenders attack the ball down the court and being able to get it to their goals to shoot that, whereas New Zealand had a bit more experience, a bit more cool heads um, and got the win at the end. But, my gosh, it was just an absolute crazy game. I was on the edge of my seat. It was bonkers. <laughs> what did you make of some of the moves that were made during the match in terms of players taken off the court at various stages? It's been interesting to read some of the commentary since. Yeah, look, I haven't read too much of it, but my own personal view is that players need to be able to settle into those positions um, to be able to build on the court. And I think the week before in Christchurch, there were changes made, and they were great changes. They were. They were mm. the right changes at the right time. Mm. But if you make the wrong changes at the wrong time, it can be extremely detrimental. And when Gretel Tippett came off the court, who I thought was playing phenomenally, I was just like, oh, I don't know if that's the right change. And then... The Australian Diamonds don't seem to have a different game plan. They have plays that bring different things, but then if that's not working, or say it does work, but then the opposition will figure that out within, say, five minutes yeah. or so. Which and they kind of did, didn't which they? Which they did, yeah. and they conquered yeah. it. And then they kept on changing players, but then those players out on court aren't confident because they haven't been out for the rest of the game. And mm. also, they're worried they're going to get dragged. Mm. So they can't play with confidence because they're like, oh, my gosh, if I miss this shot or whatever, I'm going to get dragged. Long and behold, they don't want to make mistakes. Prophecy. They exactly. don't want to make mistakes. So um, I'm not about the huge amount of changes. I just think if they had have maintained that, they could have built confidence with each other, kept those connections going and maybe built themselves back into the game. Some changes, yes, but it was just too much for me on the weekend. We've spoken a little bit, Chance, about the experience factor with this Australian team, that it's a bit of a new team, that Lisa Alexander is flipping around some combinations like we just spoke about to try and see what works. This is what they came up against on the weekend, just in terms of experience and the games played. And you can see there, it is a massive difference. There is a huge difference. Have a look at that. New Zealand with the whole team, 794 test caps between them. Remembering they have to step out on court to gain a test cap. Australia currently has 367. I'm not good at math, but I think that's about half. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll go with so, that. Yeah. Um, but the main thing is, have a look at this. Falau, Langman and Rory mm. have 400. 44 between the three of them and what that does in the experience or in that moment of the game in that crunch time their experience shines and stands up have a look at Australia with only 367 yeah. for the whole team um, they're just not used to standing up under pressure and the only way to be able to do that is to get the experience to do it and you can only do that by staying out on the court so I think it is phenomenal that the Australians are doing so well with the limited amount of test caps that they have because remember going back last year to the Commonwealth Games mm. New Zealand Zealand finished fourth when they didn't have, we yeah, call them the, right. fossils. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fossils. Whereas, yep. you know, a lot of girls in Australia have retired uh, and we're still within that one goal point. So there's only a few tweaks that Australia need to make to still be the most successful team. But New Zealand definitely, I think, have it over the top of us at the moment. Funny you mention that because we were exchanging texts and all that sort of stuff after the game. <laughs> For all of the experience that New Zealand have got, there's one player in particular, though, that when you were texting and telling us who you liked... 
There was one in particular from New Zealand that grabbed your attention. Who's not as experienced as some of the players we spoke about? Yeah, but there's two points to this, Jake. So the player that I was most, um, most impressed with on the weekend was Karen Berger. Yeah. Have a look at this. Ten deflections, six intercepts and nine games. But Berger only has... 14 test matches and for me she was best on court because when it was bought like the ball was bouncing back and forth continuously especially in that last quarter she was the one that stood up but I think that she's able to stand up because of the experience she has around her. She has trust yep. that if she doesn't get it, then Jane Watson behind her will get it. She has trust that Katrina is right there next to her, backing up her every move. And mm. so, although she's not experienced, she can play with the confidence of an experienced player because of that that her team gives her. Whereas, unfortunately for the Diamonds at the moment, it seems to be a bit of a domino effect, whereas one player crumbles, it seems to the next does, the next does, and the next does, and one ball out of court turns into two, three, and four, whereas you just need a nip that in the bud straight away. So a huge effort from Karen Berger on the weekend. She was very, very good. Let's find out what's trending for this week. And it's another milestone edition of what's trending. Last week it was Lisa Alexander and her 100th test win that we spoke about. And now it's the skipper's turn. Can you even cope? Christchurch, no, Lisa. Too many centuries. Century, <laughs> century, century. We're thinking it's cricket. Oh, raise your um, bat. Yeah, it's well played. But Jolly good. Huge, huge effort for Caitlin Bassett mm. to achieve 100 Test matches. She's now a centurion. She's now number five, which is amazing. There's now 178 girls that have played in the Australian dress. And so Look the most impressive thing about this is that there's only a certain amount of test matches at the end of every year. So Caitlin Bassett got her debut in 2008 and has been continually playing ever since. So her 11th year in the Diamonds, over a decade, a huge amount of experience. And as you can see there, it's very hard to achieve. So she is now up there with the likes of Liz Alice, Sharon, McMahon, Kath Cox, Vicky Wilson. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not she sticks around for another year or two or three mm. and how much higher up the ladder she will climb. But a huge congratulations, Seabass. We know how hard you've worked for our country um, and how much you've given to our sport. So thank you so much and I hope that you enjoy this weekend so very much. Well said, well said, Shani. It's all thanks to Blooms the Chemist, your first call pharmacy professionals. We move on to our matchup of the series and it's one that we've been keeping a very close eye on Two of the running machines of world netball going head to head. Oh my gosh, they make me tired just watching them. Laura Langman and Liz Watson. <laughs> Straight up and down the court. Um, but I must say that I or think... Or with sound effects. That was with great. sound effects yeah. as well. Um, that's the squeaking in the shoe, by the way. Oh, was court. it? Yeah. Um, Laura Langman, my lord, just absolutely phenomenal. 33 mm. years of age. And I think that she definitely had the better of uh, Liz Watson on the weekend. Once again, she had a huge amount of circle edge feeds. So that doesn't just come down to Liz. That is a wing defence centre effort to be able to keep both of those players off the circle edge to stop them feeding. But it's just her fitness that allows her to go and go and go. And once again, mm. that support of her teammates so that she only needs to play her role. Um, whereas, say, with the Diamonds, when you get a little bit confused and there's a few balls thrown away, you get torn between playing roles, staying on your player, helping out with another player. Um, and so that will need to be fixed up this weekend if Liz is to keep up with Laura but you would think that the spring chicken could, you know, outrun someone like yeah. her, but that's just not the case. She just keeps going. So make sure you keep an eye out for both of them this weekend to see who gets the upper hand. As we start to lead into this weekend, Chance, who needs to step up? From an Aussie point of view, and we've spoken about the combinations and some of the changes that are made, you get the sense going into this last game Lisa might be a little bit more settled. So who needs to lift from an Aussie point of view? Oh, let's face it, the whole team. Um, oh. I touched on it a little bit earlier. Let me go, let me work through it. Touched on it a little bit earlier in regards to the defence. And it's not um, the defence of the defenders, but it's the attacking play of them bringing it down the court. They need to be able to see the space. At the moment, they're getting jam-packed into one side. Really easy for two New Zealand to defend. Yep. And then the balls are going straight across the court, which is really easy for them to intercept. Those drives from the attackers as the ball's coming down need to be more to the ball, so it's harder for New Zealand to be able to defend it. But the Defenders need to do more work in attack as well. Um, and just more consistency. Sorry, more consistency from them. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we got yeah. there eventually. Very good. Yeah. Um, from them in their defence. We saw them stand out in the second test match. But then once the fans figured them out, they had nowhere to go from there. They've got to be smarter to be able to switch on and change in each game. You can't wait for the game to end to change up what you're doing. You've got stuff from the first game. You've got stuff for the second and third mm. game now. So have the confidence to be able to change it up when you need to. Wow. Yeah. You ever thought about coaching? Yeah, I do really want to coach, actually. <laughs> <There you> um, <laughs> but I actually really enjoy being at home as well, so it's that fine line between 
going away a lot with coaching and all the rest of it and actually enjoying my nights at the moment. Maybe uh, you can so coach from Skype. Oh, yeah. I can put a computer on the bench yes. and you can coach. And I could coach. I could do both. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you can do it in your PJs. Oh, let's call cool it. Yeah, no worries. Right. I'm an ideas man. Let's jump into In Focus for this week as well and have a good look as we continue to prepare for what's coming up for the final game. All it's got on my run sheet here is In Focus... Ask Shani. So, I have no idea what's coming here. So, Jake, this is very exciting. I have some exclusive footage from the last five minutes of the game. What? Some exclusive footage I from the game. I thought we weren't allowed to use footage for the well, entire season. No, we haven't been allowed to use footage. However, I found and got permission to be able to use this footage and I think it demonstrates perfectly yeah. um, how hard the last five minutes of the game was and it represents it really well. Take a look. <laughs> but actually, right? She's bought a grab. <laughs> she bought a grab. I did bring a grab. BYO, but you're welcome. Well played. Oh my gosh, I was sitting on the sideline of the game, and honestly, whoa. Ball, going out of court. Ball, going out of court. Yeah. Ball, thrown to the opposition. Ball, thrown to the opposition. I actually couldn't believe there were that many brain fades in one period of a game, but it just shows when your brain is under stress how easy it is to make mistakes. Mm. And at the end of the day, New Zealand managed to throw that one less way um, to help them get that extra win. And once again, that comes down to experience, but could not believe the people. Like, my head, like, it's still sore, actually. What about that? Our, our final episode, up. and Shani brings some footage. That yeah. Very, very good by you. <laughs> I hope that's not an in infringement of copyright or anything no. like that. In all seriousness though, in focus for this week, it has to be Gretel Tippett who is just continuing to grow from strength to strength. We go back to that experience factor before. It feels like the more games that Gretel plays and the more games she starts, the mm. better she's getting every time. Well, she's just so hard to defend. Um, her stats have been phenomenal. As you can see, her accuracy has been out of control. Unfortunately, I don't know why she got taken off in the last test when it was 13 from 13. I think that she's the one that the New Zealand defenders can't figure out. So if you're going to change anything, leave her on the court and either change Seabass out or bring on a different goal attack, maybe bring Katie Thwaite on with her. Um, I'm not not 100% sure what the go-to is, but this girl needs to be on the court yep. at all times. Yep. And so for me, it's not only her attacking, it's her defensive effort, her centre pass receives and all the work that she's doing around the court at the moment. So mm. she's definitely been my in focus, hoping that she gets a full game this weekend, but make sure you keep a good eye on Gretel Tippett because she is such a phenomenal athletic and her nipple smarts are starting to go through the roof too. Give, give us an international layup as well, Gretel. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Just one layup to finish off the series. One. All thanks to Blooms the Chemist, your first call pharmacy professor. She's been on fire today, Sean. So let's get the final say. The final say today, we just need the Diamonds to win. <laughs> um, and that's not putting pressure on them, but they actually do need to win to bring home the Constellation Cup. If New Zealand win, they will take the Cup home, obviously, yes. um, being 2-1 up in this series. So we need to win, and we can just win by one because we won by six in that second test. So when it comes down to the crunch, it is the differential between all of the scores throughout the whole games mm. that gets the team the win. So we need the Diamonds to win this weekend. So fingers crossed, girls, put your foot on the pedal and... Don't let those ferns come back at you like they did last weekend. Well, if history is any judge, it might be one goal. Maybe that's we need that one goal. We need that one goal, tired, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Every time, actually, do it just for history. Just for one more. Yeah. Uh, this is the game that's coming up on Sunday. It feels like it's come around very, very quickly, and as it should, because it'll be a cracking atmosphere. And Perth netball fans, they will get there in their thousands as well. Yep. So it's currently reported there's going to be minimum thirteen thousand there, which is going to be amazing, and the biggest game that's ever been in Perth. I think they released an extra hundred tickets today. Wow. Um, so make sure you jump online. Don't miss out. It's going to be an absolutely amazing game. And not only that, don't forget Caitlin Bassett's 100th game in her home city as well. Put it there. Nailed it. That's us done. It's been a great year. It's thanks, Jack. It's been fantastic. Thank, thank you, Sean. You. And thank you to everyone for being with us. And thanks to Blooms, the chemist as well, your first call pharmacy professionals. Go Aussies. We'll see you soon. Should I pivot? Mm. Now. Cool. <laughs>